Well, good morning, everybody. It's good again to be here. I had a thought that came in my head, and I usually, if I don't act on it, I feel like in a way I missed the blessing. And I've learned that when you have a thought that comes in your head, you don't want to play it off. You don't want to take it as unimportant. There's a verse in John chapter 11 that says that Jesus wept. I remember when I was just a little little boy, we would go to my granny's house in North Carolina and at her church, they would always get the the children up in the front of the sanctuary and some of them would quote their verse that they memorized that week. And a lot of the children would quote the verse, Jesus wept. And yes, maybe some of us knows the reason why Jesus wept. Maybe it's very telling of why Jesus wept. Um, Lazarus was a part of the family that the Lord loved. He loved Mary, and he loved Martha. And Martha and Mary had let Jesus know by maybe a person, or they got word to Jesus that Lazarus is sick. And I'm looking at a particular verse that I just found in verse 4 of chapter 11 in John. Jesus said these words, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now, he said that this sickness is not unto death. The death that he was referring to was not the spiritual death. Um, Lazarus wasn't going to die a spiritual death that the Lord was going to go to Lazarus's tomb after he was told where he was. I believe that he knew where he was because Jesus knows all things. And I believe he knew exactly where he was, but during that time when you lose a person, you have a gathering of people to come to the home and you basically are sitting with people. We usually call it back then, we call it a wake, whereas it would be like a visitation at a funeral service that the night before the funeral, they would have what they call a visitation to be able to meet with the family. And then the next day would be the actual funeral service. A lot of places combine it now. It just makes it easier to have the wake and the service at the same given time. And there's a lot of places that do that, but in this situation, there was people there that heard about Jesus and knew about Jesus, and Jesus wasn't there, and the word had got to 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 Mary and them that 
This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. God was going to get glory. Well, how was he going to get glory? Well, them folks that went to that wake was going to see something that they would never forget. Um, they was going to see the son of the living God show up at Martha's house. And no doubt, Mary and Martha both probably said a few words, and I'm reminded of some of the words that they said. Remember, and I don't remember what verse it is, but Jesus had waited a few extra days to go to where Lazarus was. And I think the Bible even said in this story here that... um he he knew Jesus knew that he was going to succumb, that he was going to die from it. But see, God had other plans for the people. He was going to get glory from this situation of Lazarus when Lazarus had died, and Martha didn't understand that and you know she even made the comment well lord we believe that you're the son of god and we believe that he's going to rise in the resurrection and we believe that and then jesus i think he said in one of these verses and i haven't read it but jesus had told uh, martha and mary i am the resurrection I am, meaning the one in standing in front of you is the resurrection. And when Jesus told his disciples, let's go to be with them because he waited two days to go. I guess he was given time for this man Lazarus to quit breathing. And of course, Martha her attitude was, Lord, had you would have been here, our brother would not have died. Well, the Lord knew that. Um, he even told the disciples plainly that this man Lazarus had died. And, of course, they was confused about, you know, Jesus just said that, you know, he's sleeping. Well, you don't go to a person that is sleeping. I mean, if you go to someone sleeping, that's one thing. But Jesus finally ended up saying, you know, Lazarus is dead. And see, these disciples were going to get a miracle that they had never seen before. And as we get into the story... Um, Jesus comes to them and Jesus, he, he asked them the question to Mary and Martha, where have you laid him? Where is he? And obviously told him, they said unto him, come and see. And then the scripture says the two words, Jesus wept. Now, the question that came to my mind inside the house today when I remembered that word, Jesus wept, who did he weep for? Because Jesus knew that he was going to die. If he would have been weeping for Lazarus, he would have went earlier, but he didn't go earlier. He went two days later, and then the Bible says that he wept. Who was he weeping for? I want to think he wept for the ones that loved Lazarus. He wept for Mary. He wept for Martha. He saw their pain that they was going through. These people that was there at the wake, they saw that Lazarus was dead, and then they, they recognized Jesus. When Jesus got there, it would be like his evangelistic team showing up. 
at Martha and Mary's house. And see, a lot of these people, they knew Jesus' miracles. And now Jesus is basically asking, where have you laid him? And then Jesus begins to weep over the loss of Lazarus, the people that love Lazarus, to the point that now, where have you laid him? So let's go where he is laying. And these people, some of them anyway, went to see a dead person healed, which was unheard of. And so what did Jesus do? Jesus knew there would be an audience of people there watching him do and some people would not believe it. Some people would have the attitude, I can't, I can't believe that Jesus would have showed up late. Now see, they all got to see Jesus open blinded eyes. They got to see the miracles of Jesus and all of this, but now this here is a humdinger of a healing, if he can raise someone out of the dead that had been in there and see even Bo Martha, you know, you have to almost just sort of bless her attitude a little bit because Martha tried to tell the Lord, Lord, he's been in the grave four days. By now he stinks. He's already going through the decomposition process. Now his body is letting off an odor. And they went in and they wrapped his body. They anointed his body, but it had been in there for four days. Like Jesus didn't know that the decomposition was taking place. It just so happens that Jesus is over decomposition. Thank God that Jesus is over the decomposition of a body. When he gets there, all these people there are following him to the grave. And Jesus begins to start talking to his, to, to his father. Uh, let me see if I can find that here. I think it's. In verse 41, where Jesus says this, he lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. I thank you that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. You heard me and you hear me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. See, that was the reason that Jesus allowed Lazarus to die, so that these folks could be able to see something that they couldn't shake. They weren't going to be able to shake this, this festivity here. They're not going to be able to forget this festivity that's going on here. And when he had thus spoke, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Now, can you imagine what's going on on the inside of that tomb? Imagine that Lazarus getting rid of, or trying to stand up, being wound up in grave clothes. But he was able to stand, and he was able to hop. You know what? I believe, literally, that when he stood, the only way he could move is he couldn't move his legs like a normal person would walk. He literally had to hop like a frog. I mean, I'm just, the Bible doesn't say that. But if he was wound up and he was walking toward the, the front of the tomb, because the Bible says here, and he that was dead came forth. How did he come forth? He was bound hand and foot 
meaning his feet was bound, his hands were bound. You know, literally, he had to get up with the strength of his muscles in his back and in his legs because he wasn't able to use his feet. He wasn't able to use his hands to prop up. When I get up out of the recliner, I have to put my hands on the armrest of the recliner in order to get me up out of that recliner. He didn't have that option to be able to use his arms. His arms was in front of him. He had to use his back to be able to lean and to get on his hips to be able to stand up. And he was bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was bound about with a napkin, Jesus saith unto him, loose him and let him go. I think it actually said up here in one place, take ye away the stone. And I'm trying to see where that is because that happened before when Jesus said loose him and let him go. Jesus said unto her, said not I, or said not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou should see the glory of God. And there's one place in here, and I'm just not seeing it. Um, he says here, take away the stone, and I, my eyes are just, watering up and I can't really see where that is but he told the the people to take you away the stone he, he, Jesus didn't roll the stone away he asked the people to roll the stone away some people had to be willing to get real near death it'd be like walking up to a gravestone in a cemetery Ain't many people going to be that close to a dead person that is now alive. <laughs> I don't know that I'd be wanting to show up someplace with a dead person and all of a sudden that person is alive now. I'm just being honest with you. I think it would scare me to death. I'm just being honest. But Jesus had told him to remove the gravestone And he told him here to loose him and let him go. You know, why did Jesus die? I mean, why did Jesus weep? He could have been there for Lazarus before he died, but he chose not to. I believe today, and I don't have proof of it, but I can only imagine, I believe that even Jesus in heaven weeps for people that are lost. I believe he sees their fate of people that are lost. I believe that he's understanding people that are lost. There was lost people that watched Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead. Some believed. Some knew who Jesus was. Some had no clue of who Jesus was. Some went there thinking that Jesus is going to fail. I'm going to fail to raise Lazarus up. And some of them, I believe, was there to watch him fail. But you know what? Jesus didn't fail. And if you're lost today, let me tell you what's happening right now. I have to, I have to believe that Jesus is weeping for a person that is lost because he knows that when he returns and that person is remaining lost, that's it. The cake is made. The cake is iced. It's done. And the Lord is willing to come to the gravestone today. Basically, he sees 
you as behind a gravestone. It would be like looking down at a gravestone. He's looking down at a gravestone, and you don't even realize that you're dead if you're lost. You're still breathing. You're still living. You're still thinking. You're still seeing. You're still smelling. You can still eat. But basically, you're condemned because you're dead. You're dead. He doesn't want you to be dead. He wants you to live. And he wants you to live like this man here was going to live when Jesus called him out of the grave. And you know, Lazarus died again. He died the second time and he stayed dead, but I believe he knew the Lord. I hope you know the Lord today. I mean, honestly, this is how I I did this service today is by having that Jesus wept on my mind. What did he weep for? What's he weeping for today? That should be our focus. What does he weep for today? He's certainly not weeping for the ones that believe in him because their fate is going to be with Jesus one day. He's going to come and get the ones that are saved one day. He's not weeping for them. I believe he is weeping for the ones that are lost that don't know him. I hope you know him today. Elderly Ministry is the website. You'll find the phone number there. Pull the phone number down. You're welcome to call. We'd love to talk with you. Leave a message if you would, okay? Thank you all for watching.